wanted to show you how I shoot butterfly using the bone grip. Okay, this is the length of the bands that I use that I like is is a five to one overall stretch. <sighs> Loose length for me is twelve and a half inches and then I have a sixty one inch drop. The bone grip is held deep in the hand beyond these knuckles for most and very light grip is all that's needed to hold it. If you try to muscle shooting a slingshot where you're fighting the hold, where you're gripping onto it really hard, can cause you problems. The reason for that is if you grip hard, your libel, your your t muscles are more under tension, they're more shaky, uh, it's just, it works totally against you. So you want as light as hold as possible. At first you may even drop your slingshot a few times doing this, but you'll see what I mean. It's a very light hold uh, that requires very little at full draw to hold. So what I do is I normally shoot like this. And the reason I do that is because I give the surface area here a little extra place for occasional bands hitting. Like, you know, on your finger, which hurts. Normally I don't have that problem because of the reason I told you prior. When I pull it back and I have very light tension where I'm not grabbing hard, the first reaction that happens is since I'm trying to pull that way and I release the bands when I do, my wrist moves the rest of the way. Um, I'll show you that here in a minute when I shoot at a target. But it's like I, I'm not trying to fight my own muscles. I, I just use just what's necessary to use them. <clears throat> to hold what, you know, that's why I like this type of grip. I'm not straining my muscles to hold it. I'm not trying to flex my fingers to hold the front of a slingshot. It's just basically resting your palm. Okay. This particular bone grip is a newer rev. It has an angle made on the top of the forks here. That angle is to make sure that your launch area off your forks is the same. In this case, always coming off the back side rather than the front side. Now, if you wanted to tip it far enough forward, I guess you could, but you're coming right across your palm at that point. <laughs> so, it's another one of those things where you take it out of the equation for having that happen because it makes a difference if it happens to launch here versus there. And sometimes when you're down there, you don't actually realize it again. Um, a lot of things to think about, you know, uh, is my fork perpendicular to the ground, for instance, if I'm shooting straight ahead? Or if I'm shooting up, is it perpendicular with whatever I'm aiming at? So, that's super important, okay? That's one of the big things. When I line things up, I do what you call projection shooting. I will look down my bands after it's stretched and I imagine it's like a stick that projects forever. Now, that only works to a certain point because you have your own trajectory to deal with. So, you do realize you're going to have this curve. 
but I'm trying to imagine that as being a straight stick, where would it go? And then I look at that distance and say, okay, how far above that or below it, depending on your eyesight and what you're looking at, you may actually be looking under the target. And you will be determined those different distances in time. And that will develop with muscle memory. I don't use the tips. Some people may. Um, I don't. I use what we call projection sighting. And where I'm looking down the band. And you see I'm shooting sideways. I call this, or we call this, gangster shooting. And what I do this for is as I'm looking down the bands, I'm looking to see one band, the top band. I don't want to even see the bottom band. If the bottom band disappears, that means I'm dead in line. If it's crooked, it tells me so, and it affects my shot. Repeatability, repeatability, repeatability. So when I look down this, I'm trying to see one band. My dominant eye will take over even though I leave both eyes open. If I was to shoot at you, that's where it would be. Now, when I shoot butterfly shooting, I do something else. I do a reference check on myself, especially if shooting straight ahead. Um, I do this. I come up and I stretch it out, but I, I pull it against my cheek before I release just to sense where exactly I'm at. I pull off about an inch at the most. You got to be careful. You can scrape your cheek and take skin straight off. I have. Just about every other butterfly shooter I know has. I've done it a few times over the past where the pouch catches. And it's hauling butt by the time it's coming from the very back. And so it's very, it can be very dangerous. Uh, and that's why I suggest to people to kind of sneak back where they're getting back behind their head a little more, a little more, a little more until they feel comfortable about it. Another thing that happens when you start doing this is like I first started shooting, I gripped on top, pulled back to my anchor. Sometimes people to do a twist. Uh, I never did that, but uh, that's just me. And either or is good. It's just it's repeatability, repeatability, repeatability. But I started like this, you know, straight up first. Then I now tried to play with gangster some. Started learning that. And then when I wanted to pull back, I had a, a problem. See, you see how my wrist just won't turn around backwards. I have no strength that way even. So I can only pull it back about that far before I figured out that I went upside down. I literally would turn my fingers in that direction. Where my wrist can get there. I have strength that way. And it feels right. So, you notice I grab on the ammo. Just barely in front of it. Where this I dip down a little. But I don't close it off. Okay.
Okay guys, you've probably seen that I was checking myself on when I come up with it, you know, does it feel right or not? You can feel that. We can feel, we know. Without even looking at it, you can kind of feel it. I maybe wasn't at first I was too keen on that, but now I can. Right through there, baby. This is just some butterfly shooting here. Making sure my fingers in the back. Make sure no slops in the pouch. Can's be pretty beat up right now, but see if I can hit the one part of it and bring it back in the picture a little. There we go. So here's a release. Hopefully you can see that. It's another release. I point my fingers to the back as if they're kind of lined up in that position already. Make sure no slop is in your pouch. If you feel your pouch is sloppy feeling after you pull it back like there's a gap between the leather and the ball stop right there and redo it you can get some wild shots doing that thinking it's okay but you kind of wonder you know if you're wondering and you're thinking it's probably bad it probably is anyway this is the bone grip that I've been using. This is the one I make. Of course, I'm favored to it. <laughs>